This lesson is on the circuit variables current and voltage. We'll be discussing basic definition, symbols and units, the importance of signs associated with these with regard to reference marks drawn on a circuit schematic that is being analyzed, and we'll also discuss the relationship to energy and to power. Let's say that we start with a circuit shown generically. You can see that uh, it just consists of four circuit components designated as rectangles. At this point, we're not saying what those are. They're connected by wires. But we might be, for example, interested in knowing what the current through this element is. We'll designate it as I sub X. Or we might be interested in knowing what the voltage is, uh, V sub Y. So we might end up finding that I sub X is equal to 4.3 microamps. So voltage might be have a value of 4.8 volts. And you can see that these variables, current and voltage, have symbols associated with them, I for current, V for voltage, and also units. The symbols and units associated with current and voltage are summarized on this table. For voltage, the unit is volt in honor of Volta, and the it's abbreviated with capital V. The symbol, as we've already seen on the circuit drawing, is also the letter V. For current, the English word to describe the motion or flow of charge, the units are ampere in honor of Ampere's early work. You see the abbreviation is capital A. And the symbol is also from Ampere's early work. It's uh, for the French word for intensity. Now, this is a circuits class, not a physics class, but let's remind ourselves what uh, some of the physical aspects of these variables are, voltage and current. Current is charge and motion, so we can say that I is equal to dQ dt, where that would be, for example, looking at the charge flowing by a particular reference point in a circuit. I is equal to dQ dt, of course, we can say that Q is equal to the integral of I dt. And one ampere is one coulomb per second. And this table summarizes several possibilities. If positive net charge is flowing in the direction of the arrow, we say it's a positive current. But if the net charge is negative flowing in the direction of the reference arrow, the current would be negative. And two other possibilities are listed here as well. So we can envision charge and motion as current. We know that positive charges repel one another. Positive and negative charges attract. So it, it takes energy to push like charges together. It would take energy to prevent unlike charges from being drawn to one another. Thus, by the, the various charges can have different potential energies. And associated with that potential energy is another key variable, namely the voltage. Suppose, for example, that we have a circuit, we have points A and B, and we want to know the voltage across those two points. We'll call that VAB. Let's designate potential energy by W, the variable W, and let's designate uh, charge by Q. Voltage between A and B is equal to the potential energy the charge has once it reaches point A, minus the potential energy it had initially at point B, and then the charge that ends up at point A minus the initial charge before we make that transition, which would be zero. Or we can say that's equal to the change in potential energy divided by the change in charge, or as one frequently sees it, just as dW dQ. W in this case is not the symbol for watts that we will, or the unit of watts that we'll have for power, but rather it's uh, for energy. We'll have to be on our toes on this as we go throughout uh, our lessons. In terms of the physical ramifications of voltage, 
For example, if we had one coulomb of positive charge and V sub A, B is equal to one volt, and that coulomb of charge moves from point B to point A, that means it gained one joule of energy. One volt is equal to one joule per one coulomb. Uh, on the other hand, positive one coulomb from A to B, that would be losing one joule of energy. We see that there's a voltage rise of one volt going from B to A, a voltage drop of one volt going from A to B. So voltage is an across variable. Imagine that we were measuring a voltage in a circuit using a multimeter. Let's say I uh, put the red lead of the multimeter on this point of the circuit. I put the black lead on this point of the circuit. Uh, we have them connected to a multimeter here that's going to read We'll read the voltage across those two points. Let's say it's a 4.7 volts. Fine, we could say VAB if the top point is A and bottom point is B, VA sub B is equal to 4.7 volts. The circuit drawing again. So we'll be adding one thing to it here, namely this symbol here, which is the ground symbol. In this case, imagine that we have the black lead always connected to the ground, the red lead always connected to uh, a, another point, a measurement point, and we're measuring the voltage here. Well, uh, the ground is taken to be the zero reference point. So if we read 4.7 volts, on, on this meter, that's the voltage at this point in the circuit relative to ground. So we might say that this voltage at this connection point is 4.7 volts, and you might have, for example, at this point a voltage of 7.3 volts. Again, those look like they're just a voltage at a point, but the understanding is that they are relative to ground. You can think of the red lead being on the point of interest and the black lead always being on the reference point. Sometimes this ground is actually a, a metal a rod in the earth. I remember buying a piece of large equipment for the lab that required just such a thing. You had to have a true earth ground. Other times it might be, let's say if you have a portable device, it might be the, uh, associated with a, a certain point just on the circuit board as a reference point or in do no voltage analysis, it might be a rather arbitrarily picked point to do the analysis, but again, ground is fr are frequently shown on circuit schematic, and, all, and the ground is the reference point for voltages at other points in the circuit. Speaking of electricity, one of my bells this month was my electric bell. I look on the bell, I see the amount to pay when it's due, and looking at the information, there's quite a lot of information about how those charges were arrived at, but I don't see any simple I, I don't see any simple V, uh, I don't see amperes, I don't see volts. What is that electric bell based on? For that, we need to discuss how V and I are related to power and to energy. Power is related to how fast energy changes with time. If you're driving a car down the road, it has a kinetic energy of one half mv squared. Uh, if you want to increase your velocity from 60 miles an hour to 70 miles an hour, how fast you can do that, how fast you can change that uh, kinetic energy depends on how much power you have available. So we can say generally this is not uh, limited to circuits, but in general, power is equal to dW dt. Again, W in this case is going to refer to energy. And how does that relate to voltage and current? We can use the chain rule to write that as dW dQ times dQ dt. And if we think about our definitions for voltage and current, then we can say, ah, this 
dwdq is voltage, and thus dq dt is current, so power is equal to I times V, or V times I. Now that makes intuitive sense because associated with the voltage is the degree of energy associated with the charge, associated with current is how fast that charge is moving, so energy per time, joules uh, per second, is directly related to I and V, namely power is equal to I times V. Now, let's return to that electric bell that I mentioned earlier. Here we see the wires carrying electricity into my house. Follows via conduit down to an electric meter. And after the electric meter continues flowing into the walls, into the basement. Here are the wires coming into the basement where they are attached to a circuit breaker box and each of the circuit breakers goes to a various sub-circuit in the house. One is labeled dishwasher, one's labeled uh, family room and basement lights. Here's a lamp in the family room and let's turn it on. Ah, at this point the board of water and light becomes interested. It is, uh, has a current of about a half an ampere flowing through this. Uh, the voltage is 120 volts. So there's a half a coulomb per second flowing through the fixture, or a coulomb every two seconds. And each coulomb gives up about 120 joules to the uh, light bulb, which heats up and produces light. And those joules are what I pay money for. In other words, the electric bell is based on the amount of energy I use. So let's return to energy. Remember that we've seen this once before in the form of the relationship to power. We say that power is equal to dW dt, where uh, the W in this case is being used to indicate energy. So, the energy is equal to the integral of power with respect to time. And I'd like to use this integral to uh, get a handle on how much energy that light uh, fixture used. We can say, I need limits, of course, and we'll start t equals zero when I turn on the light. Let's say I have the light on for 10 minutes, I'm reading the newspaper, okay, I'm done with the comics, I turn off the light. So, I use that for 600 seconds. Those are the limits of the integral. Now what about the power? Power is equal to I times V. We said that I was half an ampere, V was 120 volts. That gives 60 watts. There's a 60 watt light bulb. So this is equal to 60 times T evaluated from 0 to 600. And what's that equal to? That's equal to 36,000 joules. Now, I also don't find joules on the bell. Instead, I see kilowatt hours. One kilowatt hour is 1,000 watts, or 1,000 joules per second, times one hour. So that's equal to 3.6 megajoules. Let's go back to our lamp, which is using 3.6 times 10 to the fourth joules in that 10 minutes of operation. We know now that that's 0.01 kilowatt hours. And since the average cost of electricity on the bell was about 12 cents per kilowatt hour, it will have used 0.12 cents of electricity. Or you could say about a tenth of a cent. And this concludes our lesson on current and voltage as circuit variables. We have discussed the basic symbols, the basic definitions, the importance of reference marks on circuit schematics, arrows, uh, plus and minus signs, ground symbols, and also the relationship, of course, to power and to energy.